Welcome back, everybody. Um, kind of wanted to talk about um, this repeating repeating concept that is going to repeat a lot within all my videos is because this became a fundamental understanding of how I understand what Christ did is to understand like how the mind of Adam was created. A lot of you, when you were born into this world, you need to see that you were born into a certain state of consciousness. This state of consciousness was created created from what happened in the Garden of Eden, was between Adam and Eve and the serpent. Understanding what happened in the Garden of Eden will help you understand practically the psychology of your brain. This is how I understand how the brain works. It's basically understanding what happened in the garden enables me to understand the Adam nature or the sin nature or how the kingdom of darkness operates. Right, whatever word you want to use is practically the false identity. Your false identity was created in the Garden of Eden when Adam, when Adam and Eve uh, were deceived. Once they were deceived, the or this concept of the original sin occurred. And in my videos, when I say sin, don't think of it as it's like a bad. It was like a bad thing. Yes, sin is the expression. In its uh, expression, would be deemed as a unrighteous thing but sin in its original concept would be uh off the mark in spiritual terms knowing that the name of god is i am that i am and god is love sin would be would be i am not love or i am not good enough for love and this is where the devil really uses these phrases to practically cause people to sin or be frustrated in life is because a lot of people, okay, the reason why the world is, you know, messed up is because people are trying too hard to impress love. Not realizing you don't got to impress love for love to love you. Love is free. So if you're trying to impress love, if you're trying to work for love, if your uh, religion or your perception of religion or your whatever you, spiritual doctrine or philosophy you follow, causes you to unconsciously try to impress society, yourself, or your perception of God, or love in general from people, uh, you're in slavery. You enslaved your mind to a false concept of love, and because people are worshipping a false concept of love, they are tiring themselves out. Okay, love is free. You have to work for love. Like, you gotta be righteous through outward outward behavior not gonna work okay this is the exact reason why christ came if it if if the laws of religion that came before christ worked christ would not have to come christ came here to what to give you a new yoke <laughs> a new teaching that is light and easy okay not burdensome and heavy like the ones that pharisees right those who claim they we know love we know god and you have to do all these things for God to accept you, you know, because religion is not really our new lawgiver, if you really think about it. You know, our new lawgiver is practically social media culture, you know, that which is cool, right, is the new Pharisees of the world. Because they define who's in and who's not out. Back in the day, religion did, you know, the religious rulers did. They said, this is in and this is, you know, honorable and this is dishonorable, but... You know, the ones who create these spiritual laws of who's uh, cool and who's not cool are really the ones who are actually putting on the new burden on people. But basically, when you understand what happened in the Garden of Eden, is that Adam and Eve were deceived, right? So once they were deceived into biting the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, right, this was the disobedience that practically caused earth. The human consciousness or the collective consciousness into a descended state of being which is practically not being in union with love right in the garden before the fruit or the knowledge of good and evil, they had a relationship with love right they were able to perceive love in the wind they were able to communicate with love they were naked and were not ashamed okay that's important 
So after they bit the fruit, right, when they knew God as an unconditional God, all loving God, right, but once they bit the fruit, God and their perception has become conditional. This caused a separation. This gave birth to the carnal mind. It gave birth to the concept of the first Adam, where Paul says there's the first Adam and the second Adam was Christ. So basically, when rules, right, of good and evil entered the human consciousness, it created God in in a, a conditional way. We perceive love conditional now. Now you have to impress love, right? You have to impress God for God to be good to you. But God never changed. Love is love. Our perception of love changed. And this is what Christ came here to uh, practically deliver us from, was a wrong uh, perception of God. And the way I would, you know, say it is religion worships a God made in the image of man. Christ came here to bring the teachings that allow humans to worship God in the image of God. The only way for him to do that was to make you into a son and daughter of God, that you may see God as spirit, not made in the image of man, because a lot of people's religion Right? A lot of people worship a God made in their image. God says, no, you need to worship God in spirit and truth because God is spirit. But all other religions, even some parts of Christianity, because they don't understand these concepts or haven't fully recognized these concepts, they worship a God made in the image of man, the carnal mind. And that's why there's a lot of, you know, there, there's still a lot of flesh or carnal ideology and philosophy dwelling within Christianity, and this is why we don't have, you know, this is why we a lot of people are still depressed, sad, and, you know, going through a lot of the things that they're not supposed to be going through if they understood, understood the principles of Christ, because they like to bring that law in. But anyway, when the law entered the state of, into Adam and Eve's mind, it caused them to perceive love differently. Now it's conditional. And it says, and when, and think about this, Adam and Eve are symbolic for your mental and emotional state. Adam and Eve was the birth of the human consciousness, the collective consciousness. When you're born, you're born into the mind of Adam. This is how you got to see it. Okay. So what were you born into? Let's see. Later on the, in the book of Genesis, it says, God came and he was looking for Adam. And God, love, right? Love says, Adam, intellect, intellect, mind, where are you? And it says, I am, Adam says, I'm here. And he says, why are you, and God, and love says, why are you hiding from me? He says, because I am naked and ashamed. Mm. Your consciousness hides from love because it's naked and ashamed. But before the fruit, they were not they were not ashamed. They were not afraid. Their perception of God changed. They thought I have to hide from God. Because God is God is upset with me. God doesn't like me anymore. Right? So uh, and then God asked, love asked, who told you that you were naked? Boom. The fruit did, you guys. The fruit that the serpent deceived Adam and Eve into biting. That caused Adam and Eve to see the law. Okay? The law turned God, who is gracious, who doesn't practice partiality according to grace, which is, like, I love everybody, no matter what happens, um, into a God of conditions where I don't love actually everybody. And this is the God that this is the love, concept of love that the whole world is worshiping, the conditional God. And this is where all the suffering comes from. You're trying to impress, you know, your soulmate, or not even your soulmate, your boyfriend, girlfriend, your husband, wife. You're trying to impress them. You're trying to impress the world. You're trying to impress your boss, your coworkers. You're trying to impress certain individuals, your people, people, coaches. You know, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to get validation from them. You're trying to get them to accept you by being something great and these criteria begin to 
practically make God or this sense of love um, limited and limited and limited until your hope of love is entirely destroyed. And once it's destroyed, you, you don't love yourself. You don't like yourself. You don't have any. You don't have any drive. You kind of get. You kind of gave up. You gave up in life. And that's what. And that's what the law did. And this is why I don't. This is why I don't preach the law. I don't preach the law. I don't teach the law. I teach what the law does, the purpose of the law, and what Christ actually came here to do. Is because we're here to learn that love is the way. Not here to learn that you know you, you, we have to regulate human behavior to meet God's uh, to meet some form of righteousness for God to be good to us. God's always good to us. The only one that's not good to us is our own concept of God, which is made in the image of man or made in the image of the law or in the made in the image of good and evil. Okay, so practically saying is that you were born into a reality where love. Is conditional Christ came here to say God is all merciful and he's merciful to all people and you need to believe in this God and Christ gave multiple parables showing like why do you still think I'm of a heart of heart I'm of a soft heart I love you but you do not believe in that because the law following all these religious rules begin to taint your idea of love that it's harder to implant impress love this says it is god it is the father's great pleasure to give you the kingdom of god peace and joy practically love <laughs> does it feel like that does your religion feel like god really wants to give you peace and joy into your life or does it feel like you have to impress him if you're trying to impress god you're you're in religious bondage you're you're spiritually in egypt you're worshiping a false perception of God. Christ came here to destroy the false perception of God that you may see God as an all-loving being. And you have to die to the law. Because once you die to the law, you see God as unconditional. When you see God unconditional, you have been liberated. As it says, if the Son makes you free, free indeed you are. You realize love was always for free. Love was always there. But it was just in a like a weird hypnotic state because you believed in a lie because society believed in a lie about love and everyone's trying to practically impress love and you know if you've been in a relationship where you you know you're putting in more effort you're putting 80 percent in and the other person's putting 20 and you keep on putting more effort and effort and effort and expecting something in turn you get frustrated you get angry you get mad right in the same way it's like with uh people who are in you know legalistic religions is that they put in the effort they do everything to their great ability to get god to be good to them um and then they kind of wear out and get burned out and then they turn uh, turn in creating hate towards god and sometimes leaving the belief that god even exists and it's because you are worshiping a false god it's because you you God's looking for worshipers of spirit and truth, and spirit is grace, not law, right? And another one's truth. Christ says, those who will worship God will worship according to spirit and truth. Spirit is grace, unconditional. It's not conditional. So if you try to right, do good to receive good, you're in a trap already. You just have to realize that God is good, and he's good to you through understanding forgiveness and mercy which transforms your belief system, and your belief system creates reality. All right? You get what you believe in. If you believe in a legalistic, judge-type God, that's how your reality will look like. If you believe in an all-loving God that loves you, that's what you're going to get. So God came here, Christ, right, came here to redefine love. And in the redefinition of love, your belief systems change, your belief systems change, and your whole reality transforms. And this is the idea. Christ in you, because if you're in Christ, the Father's around. You're in the Father. If you're your reality, right? You can see react differently because you stand in the truth now. So, throughout all my videos, I'm gonna make, maybe go deeper into understanding how the uh, mind of Adam was created, but 
it will become a fundamental thing to understand in future videos, and I'll go deeper into it. Um, but understand that the principle of forgiveness destroys the condition of God. It destroys the devil. Most people's perception of God is made is influenced by the devil. When you say devil as in the one who slanders and who lies. Right? This is what the, the word devil means. Accuser. Slanderer. Liar. Right? So if, when you listen to these lies and false beliefs, right, your perception of love gets destroyed. Your perception of love gets destroyed. You hate the world. You automatically will hate the world when you don't have a good, healthy relationship with a good definition of love. Christ came here to reveal the Father, which is revealed to you guys, the real real love. And in the revelation of the Father, um, you become sons and daughters of God. So with that being said, if you guys have any questions on this video, leave them in the comments. Hit the like button if you like what I'm saying. Share the channel with others, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.